Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. You know, the devil wants to take the words of God from you. And a lot of times you'll hear people say about all the other modern fake Bibles, is that, well, no major doctrines were affected. Well, that's a lie of the devil, and we'll look at that today. Let's pray. Uh, Father, we love you today. We're so thankful for our salvation. We're thankful for Jesus. We're thankful for the Word of God. And uh, Lord, I just, uh, as always, ask you to just take this old jailbird from the slammer out of the way and allow me to communicate effectively the living words of the living God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, okay. So we're going to be talking about Acts chapter 8. And bang, we're going to put it up there. Uh, I'm really getting spiffy with this tech, ain't I? <laughs> we're going to put it up there and so, so y'all can see it while I'm talking here. All right. And uh, so what was, we're going we're gonna to start here with, uh, uh, I don't have that up, all up there, but I'll start verse 35. And this is where Philip sees the eunuch and climbs up in the chariot with him. And there, then verse 35 it says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the, at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And uh, as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, Thou mayest, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And verse 38, and he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Okay? That's an important, that's an important passage of Scripture for a lot of reasons. But as you've already noticed, up there on the chart, verse 37 has been completely eradicated, snatched out, and removed from all your modern fake Bibles, all your Catholic Bibles, and of course, they're going to give you a lot of humanistic reasoning, science falsely so-called, Enticing words of man's wisdom. Believe me, they, they, they've got a razzle-dazzle. You know, they got a hustle. They got a scam. They got a con to try to explain away. They're stealing the words of the living God from you. And it's concerning salvation. So what we want to look at is the importance of this verse first. So we'll see that uh, when Philip gets up in the chariot with him, uh, in, in, uh, he was sitting in his chair, verse 28, and he was uh, reading Isaiah as the prophet. And uh, so then Philip ran thither to him in verse 30 and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer. So opened he not his mouth. And uh, in humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this of himself or some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. So something that's uh, uh, important to do is, is, is look at that scripture in Isaiah 53 and notice some things about that. Amen. Um, so we go back to Isaiah chapter 53 and it says... Uh, um, who, verse 1, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness, 
and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely, important, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath what? Laid on him the iniquity of us all. My friend, this is a vicarious blood atonement. This is something that thus far in the book of Acts has not been preached. You go back to Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 3, and they're talking about just uh, uh, believing that Jesus was the Messiah and stuff. But thus far, there has not been any preaching about the vicarious blood atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. There has not been any preaching about him going to the cross, shedding his blood, and that blood, that sacrifice, paying for the sins of all mankind. So this is new stuff right here. That's why this is an important chapter here in Acts chapter 8, because it's, it's transitional. This, see, because Acts is a transitional book. It's progressive revelation. And so God is slipping in something, some brand new information here in this progressive revelation, this big change, because uh, the book of Acts, we're going from Old Testament to New Testament. We're going from law to grace. We're going from the, the Old Testament prophetic program for Israel to the program for the church, the mystery that had been hid from ages and generations. And we're, it, we're so it's a progressive thing that happens in the book of Acts. And it doesn't all start with the Apostle Paul. Paul comes and explains everything, but it doesn't begin. Uh, uh, the New Testament doesn't begin with Paul. New Testament salvation doesn't begin with Paul. The body of Christ doesn't begin with Paul. It's revealed by Paul, but don't confuse inception when a thing begins with revelation when it's fully explained. All right. So uh, just because a thing hasn't been revealed yet doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So everything that is New Testament salvation went into effect at the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it just, it's progressively revealed through the book of Acts. Uh, they got to clean up a little business with Israel and take that shift, and then it all becomes clear. But nothing caught God by surprise. So this is, right here, uh, really the first preaching of the blood atonement or, you know, the first bringing in of the elements of Paul's gospel. Amen? So, uh, that, that's why this is so important. And then, he asks that question. He asks that question. He says, okay, he preaches to him the Lord Jesus. Look, Jesus went to the cross. He died for your sins. He's the Savior, right? And, uh, and Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And uh, verse 37 is so important because this is what his baptism was contingent upon. To believe is to receive. Believe, accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust, believe. These are all synonyms. I, 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 get, I get really... Uh, frustrated sometimes on uh, YouTube and Facebook and stuff when when people are just so hung up, you know. You uh, oh you if you receive Christ, no no you have to believe this certain blah blah blah. You can't just receive him. You can't just accept him. You can't ask him in your heart. You can't trust him. You can't give him your life. Like like potatoes, patatas, man. You know how you know uh, what. However, you're verbalizing the thing. The 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 question is, did you open your heart to the Lord Jesus? Did he, in the person of his Holy Spirit, come in? Were you born again? Okay. However you 
verbalize that from whatever tradition you came. The question is, did you get born again? And uh, I, I'm here to tell you that, 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 that this Ethiopian eunuch, he got born again. Amen. Hey, he believed the gospel, the truth of the vicarious blood atonement that Philip preached to him. And he got born again. And he said, all right, <laughs> I'm in. Okay. Hey, there's some water. <laughs> Can I get baptized? He said, did you believe this? He said, yeah, I believe. He said, all right, you believe. You're born again. We'll go down here and we'll dunk you. Amen. So why would all the Catholic Bibles, all the modern Bibles, all the corrupt uh, uh, e Egyptian Catholic manuscripts, all that, why would they want to take that away? Why would they want you him to just go get baptized without believing with all his heart first? Huh? Well, that's very simple because Roman Catholics baptize babies. And a baby cannot believe with all their heart. A baby can't get born again. See? So in order in order to continue with the heresy of infant baptism or baptismal rege regeneration, they had to get rid of that verse from their Bibles. And when the Protestant Reformation rolled around, hey, a lot of the Protestants, they stuck with that heresy. That's, that's one thing that didn't get all the way cleaned up during the Reformation. And so you'll go to pros Protestant denominations. You'll go to Lutherans. You'll go to Presbyterians. You'll go to Calvinist churches, and they're still baptizing babies. Listen, it don't matter if it's a baby or if it's a grown man. You can get baptized in every creek in the county. Till the frogs know you by your first name. But if you're not already born again by the Spirit of God, before you get in that water, you're just coming up a wet sinner, a wet devil. But, see, that's the religious game that fake Christianity plays on everybody. Hey, this, this baptism, this rite, this, this thing that we're doing here with the water... It's washing your sins away. It's saving you. Why? We'll even do it to the babies. You know, when Constantine was entering into Rome to take the throne before he supposedly turned Christian and made Rome supposedly Christian, he had all his troops lying up and went down the line and he sprinkled a little water. I baptized all my troops. You're all saved now. You're all you're all holy Christian troops. Go in and take Rome. And the whore of Babylon, the Roman Catholic Church, <laughs> has been doing the same thing ever since. And some of her children that didn't come all the way out, some of these Protestant, def uh, uh, Protestant denominations, uh, they're all still doing the same thing. But they can't do that if they have verse 37 in their Bibles. Amen. That's why verse 37 is so important. It's pivotal. It's pivotal about what was believed. What was believed was the vicarious blood atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what was necessary before water baptism was to believe with all your heart. To believe, receive, accept the Lord Jesus Christ and be born again before you got in that water and that's the truth and the devil don't want you saved the devil wants you to join a church get sprinkled get dunked and say okay you're good now now you're going to heaven no you're not you're not going to heaven unless you have been born again by the spirit of the living god by believing on the death burial and resurrection the finished work of the lord jesus christ and that's opening your heart and he in the person of the Holy Spirit will come inside of you and you will be born again, regenerated, made new. The Christ in you, the hope of glory, this mystery hid from ages and generations. And uh, 
The devil don't want you to know that, and he don't want you to have verse 37. Listen, <laughs> there truly is only one real Bible by divine providence. The Lord has given us the only 100% pure and perfect thing on the face of planet Earth, and that are his inspired, translated, preserved, pure words in the King James Bible. You can believe and trust and bet your very life and soul on each and every one, including Acts chapter 8, verse 37. And my challenge to you is read Acts chapter 8 and verse 37 and see, well, let me, let me turn there again. Because this is this is really it right here. If you read these verses, listen, if you have the if you have the Holy Spirit of God inside of you. If you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit. And you can hear this. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, if the Holy Spirit of God didn't just get up do backflips and shout a hallelujah and endorse and verify that that was his words. Those are his words. Hmm. I maybe got to wonder if he's even in there. All right. Only one Bible. We'll see you again in the next one.